Um, all right, guys, my name is Carlin Borisenko. I am the Libertarian uh, Party of New Hampshire nominee for governor. Regardless of what you might hear from other pseudo-libertarians in the state, I am the only endorsed libertarian candidate for governor in the state. And, you know, I, I, was, I was a little bit uh, hesitant to take on this role for a couple of reasons. Number one, well, I'm not going to win. Let's just be honest about that. I'm not going to win. But I do think it's important that libertarians uh, offer a choice to the two-party system that we have in front of us right now, mostly because Chris Sununu has been an awful rhino governor that has supported the Democrats at almost every single turn when he had the opportunity to. Um, I first, when, when I first, you know, I've lived in New Hampshire for 11 years, but I haven't really been politically active up until the last couple of years. And when I first, you know, kind of started paying attention, I thought Chris Sununu and the Republicans, not all that bad. And there are wonderful Republicans. I think that Karen is a wonderful, wonderful option for governor. And if she were to get the, the Republican um, you know, nomination, she, would, she, she, might, um, she might get my vote um, for that role. Um, you know, if I wasn't running, of course. Um, but I think that the reason that it is important to provide a third option in this scenario is that we look at rhinos like Chris Sununu, and they have, um, you know, the first run I had with him was I was working with the New Hampshire GOP last year on the anti-critical race theory bill for schools, the divisive concepts bill. Um, in the state of New Hampshire, we were actually the very first state in the country to introduce a bill on a state level to prohibit the teaching of critical race theory and divisive racist concepts in schools. I was extremely excited about that. I thought that that was absolutely the direction we needed to go in. Um, I've spent the last two years of my life fighting back against the indoctrination that's been going on in the public schools, and so New Hampshire was at the forefront of this. Well, well, what happened was that Chris Sununu and the Republican Party uh, pretty much destroyed and watered down that bill. And he did it to pander to the Democrats. And this is the number one reason why I do not believe that we should trust Republicans in this office any longer. This bill was beautiful, the way it was written in the House of Representatives. It was beautiful. It covered all of the bases to actually prevent the teaching of critical race theory in the classroom. When it got to the state Senate, Chris Sununu worked with his Republican cronies, John Formello and State Senator Jeb Bradley, to water down the bill and to take out a key provision that absolutely still leads to critical race race theory being taught in New Hampshire schools today. They took out one important provision, which is that teachers cannot teach that America is a fundamentally racist country. They took that out of the bill. That is the way that they're teaching critical race theory in the classroom in New Hampshire. Once you are able to teach that America is a fundamentally racist country, you are able to teach the 1619 project as part of the curriculum, and yes, they are doing that in New Hampshire. You are able to teach equity instead of equality, which equity is a fundamentally Marxist concept that leads to equality of outcomes rather than equality of opportunities. So those elements are still taught in the classroom today, and it is not because of the Democrats in this state. It is entirely and exclusively because of the Republicans not having the backbone to stand up and do the right thing when it was, when it was an option for them to do it. And I'll even give you one better. The Republicans tried to fix this. The good Republicans, because of course there are wonderful Republicans, Liberty Republicans in our state, they tried to fix what Chris Sununu and the Senate broke, and the, the, the larger GOP wouldn't let them do it. They actively blocked it because they were pissed off that the Liberty Republicans were trying to take away, uh, like, Dictator Sununu's emergency powers. So that is what we are dealing with. Although there are wonderful Republicans in the state, that is what we are dealing with in terms of not having a person in an executive position who will actually sign and not screw around and water down with these wonderful bills that are being introduced in our House of Representatives. So that was number one reason. But if you thought that that was just a fluke, I'm going to fast forward to this year where, again, our wonderful House of Representatives passed an amazing parental rights in education bill to bring academic academic transparency to the classroom to make sure that parents have the ability to go into the government schools in order to understand what the teachers are teaching their children. You know, when that, even though the divisive concept bill was watered down in 2021, we still had over a thousand teachers in the state of New Hampshire alone sign public petitions saying they were going to break the law to actively teach critical race theory in the classroom. So then this parental rights and education bill becomes even more important because that was supposed to give parents the power back to be able to understand what their children were being taught in schools. And what did Chris Nunu do? Came out and said he was going to veto it because he's siding with the Democrats 
again. This is why it is important that people stand up and vote for a third option for governor in New Hampshire. Think of it as a giant FU every time the Republican Party, and, and again, I'm not talking about people like Karen, I'm talking about people that are actually the ones that end up in these offices. Think of it as a giant FU every time that they have taken your vote and screwed you over and stabbed you in the back to side with the Democrats to continue indoctrinating your children in the government schools. That is what you get when you vote for a libertarian for governor. And if we are able to get a large enough percentage of the vote, well, first of all, our, our real reason for um, running both myself for governor and Jeremy Kaufman for Senate is that we need to get ballot access back in the state. We have to get 4% of the vote in either the governor or the United States Senate rate in order to attain ballot access. When we don't have ballot access, do you guys know what we have to do in order to even get libertarian candidates on the ballot to be able to give everyone an option? We have to go out and collect over 5,000 signatures, half from each congressional district. It has taken dozens of volunteers, months of times in order to be able to do this. And I want to encourage everyone, every New Hampshire re uh, registered voter that's here today, we will have these petitions at our Mises Caucus tent. Please stop by the tent and sign a petition to help us get on the ballot if you haven't already. We're almost done. We are going to make it, but we definitely need everyone to show up and get your help for that because this is what the two-party system forces us to do to even run a candidate for office. Now, now, I want to talk a little bit about what I would do and my platform if I'm running for governor, because my platform is almost entirely focused on bringing down public education in the state of New Hampshire. I want New Hampshire to be the first state that completely decouples the state from the school system. And, but, but we can't do this, ah, yay. But here's the thing, guys. We cannot do this by passing a law. We can't do this That's just right. by implementing a policy. What we need to do is to start to change culture in the state of New Hampshire in order to be able to do that. Because what we need is for the people to rise up and say, I will not give you my children to indoctrinate any longer. We That's need right. to make sure people have the options and are aware of what's going on in the public schools. And that is what I built my campaign platform around. Let's talk about my number one promise that uh, Kevin was good enough to talk about earlier. On day one as governor of New Hampshire, I would sign an executive order requiring that every public school in New Hampshire put a camera in the classroom to live stream to parents of children in that classroom exactly and precisely what the teachers are teaching. Now I know this might sound like state surveillance, and of course as libertarians we're not in favor of state surveillance, but hear me out for a second. Public schools have been broadcasting their classes over the internet for the last couple of years, all through the pandemic. And when public schools were forced to use the internet to teach children, we saw the largest exodus from government schools in New Hampshire that we have seen in generations. Because for the first time, parents were able to look over their kid's shoulder and see the public schools are not teaching the same things that they were teaching when I was in the public schools. So we have to make sure parents have access to this sort of information. And the reality is, folks, your kids are filmed all the time in public schools. I mean, even before they're in public schools, most daycares have a camera where parents can log onto that private uh, feed to watch what's happening to their kids in daycare, and they well should. But your kids are also being recorded on school buses. Your kids are being recorded in school hallways. Your kids are being recorded at recitals. They're being recorded at basketball games. They're being recorded by their friends when they just have their iPhones. The only place that they are not being recorded is in the place where it can actually make the most difference in the classroom so you can see exactly and precisely what your kids are learning. And there are a lot of teachers who are behind these types of initiatives, A, because they think it's going to show parents how awful their kids behave when they're in school when the parents aren't looking, so they like that. But also, I've talked to parents who, um, who are saying, okay, so my, my, or excuse me, we're teachers who are saying, okay, so a kid is out sick, they can just go and watch the recording recorded lesson and then not have to miss any school. That's actually a benefit. And by the way, special needs parents have been asking for uh, cameras in classrooms for their kids for decades because they're, they're special needs children are the most likely to be abused by the teachers in the public school systems. So if we can implement cameras in classrooms and get this information out there and make it accessible to everyone, that's when we can start to expose the public schools for what they really are. My goal is not to have public schools forever. My goal is not to institute state surveillance. My goal is nothing left than destroying the public schools in the state of New Hampshire and then building up other options.
Because the reality is this, the public schools are not fixable. This is something, and listen, I, I was a Democrat for 20 years. I, I was one of those people that was like, we need to give teachers all of the money that they require to make sure that they can give our, to our children the best options and all that. I did that for a long, long time. Here's the problem. It is the staffing pool. It is the teachers. Because how the woke nonsense is getting into the schools right now is it's starting in the colleges of education. It is starting with the teachers who are actually training the teachers that are teaching your kids. It would require two generations to retrain enough teachers to fill the roles in public schools in order to be able to fix the problem that we have. That is why we do need to take the drastic step of targeting public education directly. Because until we do that, we aren't going to be able to build up the charter school. We aren't going to be able to build up the homeschool pods. We aren't going to be able to have the resources to do that. One another one of my initiatives is I would work with the legislature because I think I, listen, as governor, I could not do everything by executive order. Try as I might, I, I would not actually be a dictator like King Sununu. So I would work with the state legislature to introduce a bill to make the property tax optional. Um, in the state of New Hampshire, 66% roughly of our property tax goes directly towards funding the public schools. Hey, if you you like the job the public schools are doing, continue to fund the public schools. No one is going to force you to do it. But if you would rather take that nice chunk of change and put it towards a private school education for your kids or a charter school or homeschooling or, you know, just paying the, uh, the, the gas bill at the end of the month because God knows that's gone up lately, you're going to have that option too. And guess what? If schools don't have money to be able to do this, they can just fire all their diversity and equity staff that they've hired over the last two years and reclaim that budget. Did you guys know that schools in New Hampshire have only spent about 30 to 40 percent of the federal COVID <laughs> money that they all took over the past two years in terms of like funding the schools to be able to make them be able to survive in the era of COVID? They only they spent less than half that money. There used to be a website tracking how much of that money the schools were actually spending. It's not as though they don't have the resources. So you know what? They don't need any more of our taxpayer money in order to be able to do it. Another one of my initiatives is I would immediately defund every single program that is state funded with equity in the title. Because equity, <laughs> thank you. Equity is presented as an idea that is just about fairness and justice and leveling the playing field, but it is decidedly not about that idea. What equity is, is about creating a society in which the mediocre is the standard. It is about holding down the exceptional. It is about not allowing the truly exceptional, the truly genius to be able to rise. That robs all of us. If you have ever read the short story Harrison Bergeron or seen the really bad but kind of great TV movie that was made from that short story, it's on YouTube if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend you go and watch it or read that story because that is a story of an, ent an entire society built on equity where the smartest kids in the classroom have to wear headbands to be able to distract them, to numb their intelligence, where the best dancers have to wear weights on their ankles so that they can't jump higher than anyone else. That is actively what the public schools are trying to build in our country right now. And not only are they building it by infusing equity into the classroom, they are also infusing it by hiring a plethora of diversity, equity, and inclusion staff. If any state, uh, state money is going to those programs, I will immediately take it away. And again, they, that is not required to educate your children. And the reason that I'm so hyper-focused on this is that we know that the public schools are completely failing in their primary job. The National School Report Card has told us that 36% of public school students nationwide graduate from high school knowing how to read. 36%. And that's, that's not even the worst statistic. 33% of students in public schools around the country graduate from high school knowing how to write. 26% of students graduate from high school knowing how to do math. That is what our taxpayer money has bought for us. Less than one third of students are learning the basic fundamentals because schools are so much more focused on teaching equity and social justice and overt state sanctioned racism and grooming your kids in the classroom. I broke a news story a couple uh, uh, months ago in which a public school in, in Vermont, you know, they, so it's a little bit different over there, they were grooming children to come out of the closet as trans in the fifth grade and then putting them on the internet in the seventh grade at 
12 years old to brag about how much their public schools had supported them in doing it. It has got to stop. Parents have got to put their foot down. As governor of New Hampshire, I would make New Hampshire the most parent-friendly state in the country, and I would make us the capital of homeschooling in the country so that we can finally and at long last separate government from education. Thank you.